We are back on the verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, as we are each and every week. And we have last week's guest stuck around to tape another show, and it's uh, Mike McCarville. So this should be lively. It should. He camped out in the studio all week <laughs> waiting for this to come about, and then we had to feed him and everything else. But he's worth it. He really is good. And we're going to be talking about different things than we talked about last week. Uh, all I think you'll find very interesting. Last week we generally talked about state issues. Today we're going to generally talk about national issues. But with Mike on the show, you never really know what you're going to talk. You just kind of start and see where it goes. It's all coming up today on The Verdict. <laughs> Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our guest, Mike McCarville. Stay with us. In driving rain, blistering heat, and bitter cold, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, Chesapeake drills nonstop for natural gas on American soil. Chesapeake drills more new gas wells than anyone else, and from those wells collects the most drilling information and acquires more 3D seismic images, leveraging every efficiency to improve the odds of finding more natural gas every day with every well we drill. The better job we do of discovering bigger reserves of clean, burning American natural gas, the greater the prosperity of our nearby communities, our state, and our nation. And as long as there are more gas reserves to be found here in the U.S., we will never rest. Chesapeake. Natural gas wins the day. We are back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. I almost feel funny introducing uh, Mike for his 11th appearance, but we are pleased to, to have Mike McCarville back again this week, as we did last week, to kind of continue the discussion uh, about what's going on both uh, locally and nationally. Mike uh, just has uh, the best reputation around for being fair and uh, interesting and honest and uh, brings good, solid, uh, up-to-date information. He brings it to you today. Mike, welcome back. Thank you, gentlemen. Always a pleasure. You know, a lot of people were talking six, eight, ten months ago about the campaign was starting too early nationally. I'm talking about the presidential <laughs> campaign. Him. It was starting too early. It would never hold. But, you know, i got to say that I really haven't lost interest. I mean, it never has really got tired. It just it, it seems like it's just been a very interesting campaign. Well, it's to, for the to, presidency. For to, 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 to folks like point. us who pay attention to this kind of stuff, yeah. it has been fascinating in a way. But listen, th this presidential campaign that still is over a year away in terms of its culmination, has been underway for a year. And, and it's different this time around because there are so many candidates on both sides and because all of them have been s s slashing and taking names, as we say. I mean, th this is, we've, they've been going at it in, in recent months, like the election is coming up here in, in, a, in just a, you know, a few days. Or It's, it's amazing. Uh, the, the way it's uh, developed. Mm -hmm. You know, but they don't drop out. You know, you have the candidates who just don't get traction. Uh, that's right. But they stay not, on television, they keep talking, they keep campaigning, and, and you oh. wonder what drives them. It cannot be fun to wake up and say, I'm going to try to convince somebody to vote for me for president. I think some of them have specific uh, uh, topics, uh, agenda topics, mm -hmm. that they want to push. And that's the only reason they stay in. Uh, Tom uh, Tancredo, the Republican from Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, has acknowledged uh, that he probably didn't have a chance of, of winning the party nomination, but he has several issues that he wants to keep talking about, and he wants the other, the front runners, if you will, the top tier candidates, to adopt his position and his talking points. So he stays in for that reason. Uh, Ron Paul from Texas, 
uh, he's got his own issues. And again, Ron Paul, uh, nice a guy as he is, in my opinion, doesn't have a chance of winning the Republican nomination. Okay. Let's look at the Republican side. Sure. And see, you kind of tick them down as you can and tell you how, who's doing well, who's not. Well, I, I think those, uh, well, first let's break them down in, in, in the tiers, the yeah. top tier and the second tier. Yeah. Uh, the top tier obviously includes uh, Rudy Giuliani, uh, Mitt Romney, uh, and Fred Thompson at this point. Uh, the second tier, Mike Huckabee, former governor of Arkansas, Ron Paul, Tom Tancredo, all of these other folks. McCain. Who, McCain, John McCain. Yeah, yeah. and McCain, uh, you know, six months ago was near the top of the pack. Yeah. He's lost traction. I think John McCain, God love him, he, he's the kind of guy, I think his time came and went. I think his time was a few years back, uh, and he, he didn't make it. And uh, the, the, the longer he goes this time around, I think the weaker he becomes. Um, and uh, I, the, the guy who's gaining attraction, I think, right now is Giuliani. Uh, and uh, Mitt Romney probably not far behind him. Thompson got a huge surge uh, by uh, his prolonged buildup to his official announcement. And then when he announced, and he really hadn't done much since then. Uh, he's uh, talking a pretty good game. Uh, but he just he really hadn't caught on the way you would anticipate somebody might. Uh, and I know uh, looking at the, the polls from the different states uh, around the country, uh, it's uh, Giuliani, Romney, Thompson, Thompson, Giuliani, Romney, Romney, Giuliani, Thompson, however you want to mix it up, it consistently, those three are the top three. Who do you think are the favorites, uh, the favorite, I should say, in Oklahoma? Uh, in Oklahoma, I would say it's probably between uh, Giuliani and Thompson. I think if it were held right now, Thompson would probably win the Republican vote in Oklahoma. Uh, but these presidential races, you know, they have a way of changing pretty yeah. rapidly mm -hmm. at one misstep by a candidate. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Well, typically, though, when you go through the primary process on the Republican side, the candidate, it all seems to move to the right to get elected. Oh, that's true. But yes. Giuliani is, is not a guy that's way to the right. I mean, he's a centrist candidate. Yes, and, and to a lot of people that hurts him. Yeah. Uh, in, in his positions, but, he but, took as mayor of New but York. Might, but it would obviously help him. You at least you would think so in a November campaign. Well, nationwide, it probably would. Yeah. So, so, so how do you how do you look at that? I mean, both the other candidates that you mentioned, that, that Romney, Romney and maybe Thompson's farthest to the right, and then Romney and, mm -hmm. and Romney has some issues about changing positions yes. through the years, and then Giuliani just has trouble with some issues when you're talking about Republicans. That's but true. he's very popular. He gained some support through 9/11 and the way he handled it, and he kind of looks presidential. And he and he's a dynamic uh, campaigner. He's a pretty mm -hmm. dynamic guy in person, as is Fred Thompson as is uh, mm -hmm. Mitt Romney. So how's I mean, it going to shake out? I mean, which of those three would be a vice presidential candidate? I mean, would, would, one, of the other th would one of them take that on? I, I don't see Fred Thompson doing that because mm -hmm. Fred Thompson, face it, can go back to making a million dollars a year uh, in Hollywood uh, as an actor if, he, if he's unsuccessful. And he might even be able to make two million a year after a presidential <laughs> race. Uh, I could see perhaps Romney as a vice presidential candidate. I don't necessarily see Rudy Giuliani as a vice presidential candidate. Uh, I think he, he just strikes me as the kind of guy, it's either he's going to be president mm -hmm. or he'll just what about McCain? Away. Um, I'm not sure about McCain. I, I have difficulty imagining a scenario by which one of those three front runners we've talked about would select John McCain, mm -hmm. frankly. Let's look at the Democratic side. Yeah. Run down the, the tiers or well, the I list. Well, clearly the front runners are, are Hillary Clinton and uh, Barack Obama. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, I've said uh, for a long time now, and I believe it to be true, I think there is a dark horse. I think it's Bill Richardson, the governor of New Mexico. Uh, in the South, Richardson will run very well among Democrats, primarily because of the conservative positions he's taken over the years, whereas Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama might not run too well in certain states. B B Obama uh, will run better in some states than Clinton will. But again, it, it seems that the Clintons, if you will, uh, have kind of this legacy of doing well in the South, having you know been uh, spent a lot of years in the state of Arkansas, uh, that could come into play. But I think Barack Obama, I mean, his rocket ship obviously went up uh, and has, uh, has has reached heights. I think it's back down a little bit, and I think Hillary, on the strength of all of the contacts built over all of the years she and her husband mm -hmm. have been at the national level in American politics. Uh, ties to uh, uh, various uh, factions within the Democratic Party, 
has retaken the lead, and I, I think she's probably going to be mm -hmm. the nominee. And would he accept the vice presidential role? I mean, he's oh, been attacking he her pretty, pretty strongly. Yeah, but I, no, I think he would. Yeah. Do you think Obama did accept yes. the vice presidential role? I, I yeah. do. Does yes. he help the ticket? Probably. Yeah. Three questions. Yes. If the election were held today, who would be the Republican nominee? Oh, goodness. Um, Rudy G. If, who'd be the Democratic nominee? Hillary. Who'd win in, in the national election? Wow, flip a coin. I would have to say probably Hillary Clinton. My silence is... is uh, which is, would is, scare is, is a lot of people silence. half to death, I know uh, that, particularly in our state. Let's talk about the negativity. It seems like it's oh, ratched goodness. up another yeah. knot, and Obama's been attacking Hillary, and, and there's been some barbs going back, back and, and, the, and the Republicans have gotten... In. Does it seem nastier to you? Does it, does it seem like it just is an ever-increasing ever, there, ever a level of nastiness in, there, in politics? There is a nastiness uh, and at the national level in particular. And it is not necessarily, Mick, <clears throat> Democrat versus Democrat, Republican versus Republican, it is Democrats versus the war in Iraq, President Bush, and all things Republican. Uh, and it is Republicans trying to defend themselves in a lot of ways. Uh, but, but by and large, it, it is the, the, the Democrat attack dogs <clears throat> going after everything Republican. And that's where the nastiness is coming in, in my mind. I mean, uh, things like uh, uh, circulating artwork on the Internet that shows the official seal of uh, the uh, Republican Party, uh, a guy with uh, handcuffed, his hands handcuffed behind his back. Mm -hmm. I need to jump in and get us to a break, but we'll pick yeah. it up there and talk about a Democratic-controlled Congress. Has it changed things in Washington? Mike McCarville is our guest today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. We are back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our guest, Mike McCarville. A year ago, we were talking about how the Democrats had taken control of Congress, and I think that the Democratic Party and their faithful were thinking, okay, finally, we're going to get some headway on this war in Iraq and, 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 and get out of there. And I think a year later, I think a lot of those Democrats are upset at this Democratic Congress, and they, they really don't feel like they've, they've done what they were sent to do, and that was to attack the president to get us out of Iraq. And I, I think I would agree with that. And probably uh, the, the, the frustration with the Democratic leadership and the you know, Congress, Mick, uh, is that uh, despite all of the early rhetoric, uh, nothing much has changed. And they've been unable, essentially, to agree, really, on what their position is about mm -hmm. the war in Iraq. They keep talking about bringing the troops home, do this, do that, do that. Uh, but nothing much has changed to the point that Nancy Pelosi and others in the Democratic leadership are now being attacked by those who supported them a year right. ago. I see that uh, too. The liberals. And most of the attacks are coming via the blogs on the Internet. Uh, and it, it, is, it is amazing to me, having watched it develop, 
the rapidity with which these attacks can come. I mean, you know, the, the Internet's a wonderful thing, but boy, it has opened up in, in politics a lot of cans of worms. And uh, the, the, the Democratic leadership in the House, if they say, or if Nancy Pelosi says or does something that the far-left liberals uh, uh, don't like, she hears about it instantaneously, mm -hmm. just as all the other members of Congress do. Well, a year ago, the, 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 sh the country had shifted left. Yes, yep. What's it going to do a, a year from way. now? Uh, who knows? Uh, the pendulum always swings in politics, as we say, and having been in it, Mick, and you and I both know, uh, having uh, been in that arena, uh, you, you never know from one day to the next. Well, has the Democratic, you, has it stalled? Has, has the momentum oh, that I they garnered a year stalled. ago, has, so it's kind of I, stalled, I, I think it's kind of up for grabs? I in, think now it's stalled, and usually what triggers change, the swing of that pendulum, is an event that no one anticipates, that no one no, can't see coming, yeah. that none of us can see coming. And in my opinion, that's what will happen, whether it's another terrorist attack, uh, whether it's the capture of Osama bin Laden, uh, or it's something in Washington. I mean, who knows? What about this uh, era of political blogosphere? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a, it, it is a great time. Uh, if you're into information and education, uh, the Internet, and, and thus the blogosphere, uh, is pretty doggone important because it, it's so instantaneous and you can find out anything. Years ago, uh, I used to have uh, uh, FEC reports and Ethics Commission reports stacked all over the office and reference books like these behind us all over the office. And now it's in that little four-pound laptop I carry around with me. I mean, it's all right there. I mean, I can click anywhere and find out just about anything. So you, you've got, it's a, it's a two-pronged deal. You've got the Internet, which is a great source of information, and then you've got the blogs like mine that have come along as a result. And to have a blog on the Internet, all you need is an address. And there are all kinds of services that provide them, Blogspot mm -hmm. being the one I use. The problem with that is that anybody can set up a blog, hold themselves out to be an expert in whatever, if it's politics or government or whatever, and then start posting the most outrageous claims. And if someone else sees it on that blog, they will assume it's true. Yeah. And I can tell you from my own experience, just right here in Oklahoma, there are blogs that put out information without a scintilla of evidence, with no proof of anything, uh, to, I mean, attacking people who are not even public figures. Well, the, the town gossip suddenly has a much larger, oh, larger it, audience. It, it, so it is incredible. It used and you to gotta, be that you could tell the neighbor over the backyard fence, that's and right. that was the extent of your audience. Or you now, could go to a local beer parlor and have a beer with a buddy, and the kind of things that you would talk about that you would never think of saying in yeah. mixed company even, right. is now on the blogosphere for anybody and everybody to read. And in many cases, it's this de kind of demeaning personal stuff that is just, it just, I just sometimes I sit and shake my head. And there are other blogs uh, that, are, that are first rate. I mean, that absolutely have good information, always backed by the right. facts, uh, that are a pleasure to read. And the others, sometimes we read them and we, you just shake your head at how bad they are. Let's change the subject just a minute. Okay. Let's talk about another local issue the, uh, in the Republican uh, Party in Oklahoma. And there's now an ethics uh, inquiry into uh, in the House of Representatives how some campaign funds were, uh, were handled. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, essentially, uh, for those who might not know the details, the, the allegation is, the apparent allegation yeah. is, based on what we know, is that uh, the, uh, the House Republican Political Action Committee in 2004 solicited donations from other House members, Republican House members, for the Republican Victory Fund. And that those checks were uh, made payable to the Oklahoma Republican Party, where the Victory Fund was located. Instead, the checks were deposited to the Oklahoma County Republican Party, where it is said in the conversations uh, those in charge of uh, the PAC had more control than they might have had at the Republican State Party. In other words, they could make sure the money went where they wanted it to go. So the question before the Ethics Commission is, if a check is made payable to the Oklahoma Republican Party, can it legitimately and legally under the ethics rules be deposited into another account? In this case, the account of the Oklahoma County Republican Party. And that's the nub of the issue. When you get through all, you know, get all the chafe out of the way, that is the basic question. 
the Ethics Commission has to answer. And, and to make it clear, some of the checks that I've examined were made payable to the Oklahoma County Republican Party from these campaigns. So, uh, and some of them were even marked in the, in the memo line, Victory Fund. So clearly, whoever wrote that check knew exactly where it was going. But, this but in is, many cases, they apparently did not. This is money that some House member had to, in his campaign, his exactly. or her campaign fund that they didn't need. That's they right. Had had excess. A, did, didn't have a serious campaign or had no opponent, and they were trying to help elect other Republicans, which they obviously were partially successful in doing. Hmm. Well, what's behind the complaint in the first place, do you know? Uh, the fact, I think, in the minds of some people, that, that what occurred was illegal, that you cannot accept a check made payable to one entity and then deposit it into the account of another entity. Even though it might be the same uh, overall goal, you simply you can't do it. I mean, that's the allegation, I think. Hmm. What about the uh, allegation that uh, the people about whom the complaint is made have their hands tied behind their back because they're bound by confidentiality, whereas the people who are complaining and who leaked the complaint uh, about the ethics investigation can say whatever they want to? Well, uh, clearly, clearly, that, that is a point, uh, Kent. Uh, but, but again, whoever made the complaint has not been identified because if you file a complaint with the Ethics Commission and then you go public, identify yourself, uh, that kills it. Mm. It's dead. So the person who filed the complaint has not stepped forward. I mean, mm. what the, the genesis of this was. A little over a minute to go. We've had some time for the, the effects of term limits to take place. Healthy, unhealthy, what have the impacts been at, in, the, at the in state my legislative mind, level? In, in my mind, a healthy thing creating turnover in the legislature. Uh, and of course, let's face it, that is in, in good part what fueled the Republican takeover of the House and the large gains in the, the state Senate. Mm -hmm. Because- By the way, you got about 30 seconds left, just letting you know. All the, all the Democrats uh, that had been elected for years uh, kind of lost their grip in, their, in the districts that have become increasingly Republican and increasingly conservative, I guess mm -hmm. would be the, the big key uh, in a lot of areas. So, yeah, I think it's had a, a big impact, and I think, at least in my mind, it's been good so far. And it will probably change the list of candidates for statewide and other offices, well, because now if you're going to lose your seat anyway, you might as well take a chance on something if you still well, have the edge and, for and politics. Well, and keep in mind, while it hurt Democrats in the recent past, it's going to mm -hmm. be Republicans who will pay the price ahead. Good point. Hey, Mike, uh, we could... We could just have you on every week and, and never run out of things to talk about. Well, we certainly appreciate your time. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Guys. Mike has a website that's just fascinating. We'll give you that address when we get yeah, back. And don't forget your sleeping bag. Take it <laughs> yes, I, I will. Kit and I'll have a final word when we return on The Verdict. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. We are back on The Verdict, wrapping up a show with Mike McCarville. Always good to have Mike on. Uh, he comes with so much good information, and it's uh, always fun mm -hmm. to have him on. It always seems like there is an appropriate time. It's never like uh, there's always something going on that, that Mike can expound upon. Indeed, and he's, he, he spends his time keeping track of such things and bringing it to us uh, when he can, and we're grateful for it. 
uh, we find his information oftentimes uh, credible, but always interesting. Um, Mike has a website where you can go if you're at all into politics, especially in the state of Oklahoma. You can check it out. The address is there on your screen, www.tmrcom.blogspot.com. And you can also sign up for an email letter that he will send, and it will then link you back to the website on a daily, if not more frequent basis. We certainly appreciate Mike being on. Also want to drive your attention to our website, theverdict.tv. You can go on this website and tell us about a show that you'd like to see on a future edition right here. Uh, that address is theverdict.tv, theverdict.tv. For Kent, I'm Mick, and we'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.